Hello, my name's Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamps here in the UK and welcome to YouTube Tuesday. Well, Christmas is upon us now and so I thought it would be lovely to make one of my all-time favourite cards using one of our Framer stamps. Um, I've got a, a number of these stamps actually. This one says Noel with a great big O and then we've got Joy and Peace and the idea is there are others as well like sport and work, no not work, uh, sport and home. Um, and the idea is that you can create little landscapes and pictures within the great big O or the C, the framer. So let's get started. Um, and there are several tricks and techniques throughout this uh, little card which you'll be able to hopefully use. So I'm going to use A6 Clarity card, that's the coated stock. And because we're going to be embossing, I'm just going to dust this with some talcum powder. The idea is, you see, when you, when you dust with talcum powder, it acts almost like an anti-static and the, the embossing powder doesn't cling. Also, it smells lovely. So the first thing I want to do, and you'll notice that I've stripped the blue indexing off the stamp. That's a very good idea if you're going to use a Versamark ink pad, otherwise it might go really blue like mine. Um, how did I strip the indexing? I use, uh, you can use nail varnish remover or um, the range of distress, uh, not distress, what's it called? This stuff. Uh, alcohol blending solution, that really is good because it doesn't mark the acrylic mounts either. So what we're going to do is just ink up the Noel with the Versamark, with the clear pad. We've already dusted the card with talcum powder. I'll put my glasses on and then we're going to stamp the image, not pressing too hard otherwise you'll get a squelchy effect. Um, we're going to stamp the image into the centre of the card like so and then we're just going to press lightly and make sure that we've got the whole image. There we go. Okay and then we'll lift. Good. Then I'm going to take some gold embossing powder. Now before I carry on let me just put a tiny piece of let me put some copy paper underneath so that we don't throw powder all over the table. There we are. See, when we lift that off, because of the talcum powder trick, all the powder just dusts off. Now, because I'm using gold detail powder, um, sometimes that can cling. So this is great. There we go, make a funnel, put it back in the pot. Good stuff. And then before we heat emboss, because it's a thermographic powder, I'm just going to lightly blow my artwork to make sure that there's no powder on there, embossing powder, no stray speckles. Good, and now we should take our embossing, our heat gun, and I'm gonna heat from underneath. Now this takes a little while. The idea is if you heat from underneath, the powder dries more slowly, has, a time, has more time to melt, and therefore it goes like silk, like glass. We're just going to move the heat around in the background. And by and by, you'll see the gold start to come through. Here we go. Just move around so you don't scorch the card. And round we go. While I'm doing this, why don't you listen to some lovely music? Okay, perfect. So now we've embossed our Noel. And the next thing we need to do is create our picture. So, stage two. Before you all arrived, 
I stamped Noel onto a piece of copy paper and cut the O out, the hole. And, uh, and what I'm going to do now is cover up the rest of the card. So the best and easiest way to make sure that the mask doesn't slide is to take a little bit of masking tape. Let's just put a piece there, sticky side facing up, and a piece there, sticky side facing up. And then I can just maneuver my, my Noel to fit. And you'll notice that I stamped it in a different color. Because it's black, I can see the gold. And this is important because what it means is that when I, when I go over this in a minute with a brayer, I won't get um, like a halo, like a white halo. When you cut the O out, you see there's still some black around this piece. That ensures that you don't get that halo. Cool. So the next thing, let's just put this to one side for a minute. And the next thing I want to do now is take my blending mat and I need to just load my brayer with the sky colour, which I'm going to use. I'm going to use blue, blue denim. So I'm going to ink up my brayer and you'll notice that I'm inking it in the centre, you see. So that way I haven't got any ink on this side or, or on either side of the brayer. That's it, that'll do. I can always add more if I need more. And then what I'm going to do now is just spread the ink like that so that I've distributed it on the brayer. And I'll just push my, I'm just going to pop my mat over to that side and enter the artwork. Here we go. And then what I want to do now is just, oh, I need a, sorry, I need also, uh, I need a, um, a hill before I go any further. Back with the mat. See now what I can do here is I can use the side of the mat to pull my hill. I've got two going here. I thought it was hard. Right, there we go. So we'll just tear the hill through like so. That'll do. Right. And now I'm going to cover up, I'm going to make the land. So that'll be nice. And again, I need a little bit of low tack masking tape and that will ensure my, my hill's in the right place like so. Just stick that there and there. Okay, now we're ready to rock and roll. So I'm gonna turn this round so I get a good clean sweep at it and now we're gonna load the sky. So I'm gonna stand up for this one because I like standing to Brea. I'm just gonna lift up now and you see what's gonna happen is You'll see here, as I start to roll my brayer over the sky, see, as I go down further, it's lighter here, but it's darker around the top, isn't it? You can see the gold. So what I want to do though, to make sure that it stays dark, is I'll go back in the top. I want it to be lovely and dark there. See, but not so much at the bottom where the snow line is. There we go. So that works well. And I can always go back and get a little bit more ink from the, my mask is moving up, but it's okay, I caught it. So I've got my sky now, and I want to add a little bit of blueness around the base as well. So I'm just going to turn this around like so, lift this over like that, and then I'm going to just add a little tiny bit of blue down the bottom. So here we go again. I'm just adding a touch of blue, what's left on the brayer. Okay, that'll work. Excellent, let's see, let's have a look at our picture now. Okay, it's coming together. Now, let's take a look. I want to use my, my little tree. And the idea is this. Once again, I'm gonna cover up my scene and I'll use my, just my, is that gonna stick? Yeah, that's it. So I'm just gonna cover up my scene and then I'm gonna plant my trees. So I need my blue ink pad. Now one of the things about using a newish ink pad is it's always a good idea to check how the ink is going to sit on the same type of card. So for example, if I just go straight in there, it's quite wet, isn't it? Now if I blot it very, very lightly first, like that, 
and then plot it might be a bit better. So I'm going to blot it very, very lightly and then I'm going to plant my tree. So in with the tree, good. So I've got my tree in place and now I want to add a reflection or not a reflection, a shadow if you like. So I'll turn it round like so and I'm going to add my tree but this time I'm going to blot it really well because I want it to be quite faded by comparison. And then I'm going to just make sure that the base of the tree touches the base of the tree, like so. And then I'll come back round again, happy with that, and I'm going to use this part of the hill again and a makeup sponge. And what we're going to do is just take some of the blue from the blending mat and we're just going to anchor that tree so that it's not just floating around. So we just add a tiny bit of blue to the base of the tree. Let's check what we're doing. Yeah, that'll work. Let's just move it down a tiny bit, like so. Right, because we don't want the tree floating around, do we? So there we are. So we'll just add a little bit of blueness at the base. Just pull it through like so. That'll work. Nice. So we've got our base in place. I think this is working well and we'll just block that tree. Okay. So let's take a look at our picture now. Yeah, it's coming together nicely, isn't it? So the next thing I want to do, now I've done that, is take my large post-it and what we want to do now is cover up the framer. So we're going to make a frame around it. So I just want to lift away my masking tape now, like so. Here we are. And then I need the hill that I used before. And I'm going to pop my hill in exactly where it was there, like so. So it follows through the O. That'll do. And then we'll just attach it at the back so it doesn't slide around. That's a good idea as well. Okay, and now we're going to make our, our sky. So let's just move that to one side. And what I want to do is enter the brayer and the sky again. So I just want to add a little bit more blue to the blending mat. And then we'll just spread out some more blue like so. Okay. Now I know that the blue is darker at this end than it was at this end. So let's have a look. If I start to spread the blue across like this now, okay, just like that. Just move it through and then down we come slowly. Oops, a daisy. Hang on a minute. Oh, that'll be all right. Right, just keep going in one direction like so. There we are. This will be good. Okay. And the idea is, you see, when you lift this off, it looks like it's gone right through there like so. Excellent. And now down the bottom, there should be a little bit of blue left on here. So I'm just going to go backwards and forwards across this mask just to add a little bit of an accent down the bottom. And it will give me somewhere to, I need a guide in a minute, you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's just get this done. Okay. So we've got some blue down the bottom as well. Cool. Whew. Now let's lift this off and let's see what we've got. All right, looking good, isn't it? So we've got the blue sky and we've got um, more of a fade down the bottom. Now at this stage, if we wanted to, we could just polish this. So let me show you what I mean. Because we're using Clarity Card now, I can actually buff this to a high gloss. So let's go around in here and let's do the sky as well. Let's just buff the sky. I might leave that tree alone in the middle though, it might still be a bit wet. But let's just polish the sky before we carry on. Yeah, you see, you can see immediately it comes up like glass, fabulous. That's one of the best things about Clarity Card. Okay, so now the, na the last thing I want to show you is a couple of more little tricks. Okay, we've got a really good 
gloss going there now. I'm happy with that. Now let's make this piece here really look like it's sitting on top of the other piece. So I'm going to use a fine line gold pen. Here we go. Let's just get it going. So let me get this pen going and then we can do this job too. Okay, just one second. All right, here we go. Right, so the first thing to do is just to start in the corner where you created your post-it frame and then just start just jiggling along like a deck ledge. There we go. So then you get to that end, then you turn, make the artwork come to you. There we go. So we're just going to jiggle along so it looks like an old photograph. Oh, that was a long way with no guide. Right, round we go. And then again, and you'll see in a minute, it really looks like this white card is sitting on top of the blue one. It's cool. It's just an optical illusion, really. Right, turn it one more time. And now let's do the last leg. Here we go. There we are. And then just coming up to the last point. There. So do you see how it looks like it's sitting on top of the other card? It's cool, isn't it? And one more finishing trick. Let's take one more look and I shall... Now what we want to do is really make it look like the background is part of that piece in the middle. Okay. So I'm going to just take my white pen now and make some snow. Right, let's take it from the top because it's easier than reaching across. You'll notice that with this, uh, when I'm working with Clarity Card, I always hold it by the edges. There we go, look, so we're going to bring the snow in through the aperture too. And that way, what we're doing is, you see, we're creating a relationship between what's going on around the outside and what's going on on the inside. So that's cool. And we don't need loads, we just need a hint of snow. Wouldn't it be lovely to have some snow at Christmas? I hope we do. There we are. And that's it, my friends. So you can see that we've created this illusion that this white piece here is sitting down and actually the landscape is all around in the background. So there we are, our Noel Framer. So I wish you a very, very Merry Christmas from all of us at Clarity Stamps and I shall see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye now.